right, I'm going to work this problem on this chapter quiz that has given everybody such fits. What we have is I have a survey of 50 retail stores, and that survey revealed that the average price in the microwave is $375 with a standard error of $20. I'm going to assume normal distribution. I want to know a 95% confidence interval to estimate the true cost of a microwave. Well, what I have done is I have accumulated some information that I'm going to need to solve this problem, first and foremost. I've gone through, and this is what I've gathered. I've gathered that 50 represents my value for n. It's the number in my sample. The average price of the microwave was 375, which gives me x bar. Standard error is $20. Now, for this one, if you go back into your text, it will show you that the standard error is the exact same thing as S. So if you're giving, given standard error, it's the same thing as being given the sample, and I mean the sample, standard deviation. Since I had S, sample standard deviation, I immediately went and I pulled the T distribution to construct my interval. Anytime that you have sample, you use the T. If you can't remember it any other way, remember that after S, the letter T comes next in the alphabet. All right? So, I've gotten together the formula that I'm going to use, and because I'm using T, I know I have to use degrees of freedom. Degree to, degrees of freedom are simply calculated as n minus 1. Remember up here I have an n of 50. So now what I'm really constructing is a 95% confidence interval at 49 degrees of freedom. Okay, hang on and we're going to solve this bad boy. Okay, magic. Here we go. What have I done down here? First thing I did was I broke this formula into two pieces because it's a confidence interval. That means it has an upper side and a lower side. The plus is the upper side, the minus is the lower side. So I've simply taken that plus and minus, I've just broken it into these two formulas here. Now, what have I also done? I've gone ahead and set up the first one for you, and all I've done is substituted. I had x bar. I took x bar from up here, dropped it into the formula here. I had s here. I went over here. I grabbed the standard error of $20. I dropped it in here. I had n of 50. I brought that around. I dropped it in right down here. So the only thing that I have left to explain myself for is where did I get this 2.010? Where did that number come from for this T alpha? It came from the T distribution table, and I looked at the confidence interval at a 95% at a 95% um, level of confidence, for, so a 95% confidence interval, and I looked at it for a two-tailed test, and what it told me was that was 0 0.05. So I just used the, the header of that, of that table, to find my 95% confidence interval. I simply came straight down to where I saw 49 degrees of freedom, and I plugged in the number I found there of 2.010. So remember, Reading this T distribution, go across the top, across that top column, find your confidence interval, which is simply going to be given to you, however much it should be. Come down the chart until you get to the row that has your degrees of freedom on it, and drop that number right in. So when I go to solve this other side, this lower half of the confidence interval, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this exact same calculation here that I whatever this all calculates out to be and I'm going to end up dropping it in 
right here. So this and this, those are some wild arrows. Trust me, it's all the same. Let me show you. See, I told you it was all the same. Um, I simply took everything that was up here, moved it down to this lower confidence interval. Only difference is going to be instead of adding that number, I'm going to end up subtracting it. So let me type a little math here, and I'm just going to show you how I solved to determine what I had to add and subtract from my value of X bar. I'm going to take my $375, and I'm going to add it to 2.010. I'm going to multiply that times $20 divided by the square root of 50. The square root of 50 is 7.071. Now I'm simply going to take 20 divided by 7.071, and I'm going to come up with 2.8284. So the way that's going to look is it's going to look like $375 plus 2.010 times 2.82845 if you're like crazy about decimal places simply going to take and make that multiplication one more time and I'm going to get $375 plus 5.685 rounded to $375. And I'm going to round all the way up to 69 cents. That is the top of my interval. Come down here, do the exact same thing for the bottom of my interval. Now the nice thing is, is that I don't actually have to calculate this again, do I? Because this part of the formula here is the same as this part of the formula. This part of the formula solved to 5.685. I really don't want to do my math twice. So instead of having to do the math twice, once I've calculated one side, either upper or the lower side of the confidence interval, look how I can solve it now. All I have to do now is say 300 and, I'm going to get my cursor to work. All I have to do is say $375 now minus, because this is the lower end of the confidence interval, I'm going to subtract 5.685 from it. And when I get that, that will give me the lower end of my confidence interval. Remember, with a confidence interval, it's just that. It's always an upper and a lower number. And so what I'm going to end up here is I'm going to end up with $369.31. All I simply did was instead of doing math twice, is I simply took this 5.865 right here, and instead of adding it, I took it over here and I subtracted it to give it give me the lower end of my interval. So what does that give me? It tells me that the 95% confidence interval of the true cost of a microwave oven is $369.31 to $380.69. Hope this helps, um, and I will see you guys around Blackboard.